Hey guys, welcome to part two of the top 200 drugs. This is your pharmacist Sidra and you are watching Pharmacy Tech Study Guide. In part one, we categorized the medication by their drug class and I put together the medications ending in same suffix or stem name. And in part two, I'll continue the same pattern, but in this part, I have also categorized the drugs by the health condition they treat so it's easier for you to remember. So without any further ado, let's dive into our first drug category. All right, so the first drug category I'm gonna discuss today is the over-the-counter NSAIDs. NSAIDs stand for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These medications help relieve pain, fever, or inflammation. Some of the common ones that you need to know for your PTCB exam would be aspirin. The name brand is Ecotrin. So a few things that you need to know about aspirin. One, the short form is ASA. So often on the prescriptions, you may see the doctors just write for ASA, which is aspirin. Also, aspirin 81 milligram is also called baby aspirin. And the baby aspirin is the lowest dosage of the aspirin. But remember, when you see ASA on prescriptions, not to confuse it with APAP, which is the acetaminophen. Next up, we have ibuprofen. The name brand is Motrin or Advil. Ibuprofen or Motrin is available over the counter as 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams as a prescription. It goes 600 and up. Then we have Naproxen. The name brand for Naproxen is Aleve. Now Aleve is available over the counter. The strength is 220 milligrams or 200 milligrams. When used as a prescription, Naproxen is available as 500 milligrams. And then the name brand is Neprosen. Then we have Diclofenic Sodium. The name brand is Voltaren. Diclofenic is available in the tablets form, also in a gel form, which previously the diclofenic uh, gel was a, a prescription medication, but lately it's become an over-the-counter medication, very effective medication in the treatment of pain associated with arthritis. Now, a very common over-the-counter medication uh, you will see as a combination in ASA, APAP, and caffeine. This medication is used to help with migraine because often when NSAIDs are given in combination with Tylenol, the effectiveness to control the pain is higher. And in migraine, a lot of time given when caffeine is given, that really helps with the pain. So this combination is available over the counter as Excedrin migraine, a very common one to remember. Next up, let's talk about our prescription NSAIDs. I've already talked about the prescription strength of ibuprofen and naproxen. Uh, some of the other common prescription uh, NSAIDs would be Meloxicam, the name brand is Mobic, and Silicoxib, the name brand is Celebrex. Now, a lot of the medications used to relieve pain are opioids, and opioids are considered C2. So you must familiarize yourself with the opioid pain medications. The first one, a very common one, which, which is literally dispensed in the pharmacy like a candy, which is such a sad reality because opioids are habit forming. They have a potential of abuse and addiction, but they are literally prescribed left and right for any kind of pain. And this very common opioid is hydrocodone in combination with APAP, which is acetaminophen. If you've watched the first part of this video, I've talked about the different uh, strengths the Norco comes in, which is like 5 slash 325, 7.5, and 10. So I'm not gonna go in detail in this part, but you can refer to the first part of the video and kind of understand what, the, what does the 10 and 325 refer to in Norco. Next up is oxycodone with APAP, again an opioid medication. Uh, the name brand is Percocet. Now oxycodone is available as an immediate release form and extended release form. In the immediate release form, uh, the name brand is called Roxycodone and in the extended release form, the name brand is called Oxycontin. One thing to remember about the extended release formulations is they must never be broken, cut or chewed on because these medications are designed to release the drug slowly over a period of 12 to 24 hours in the body. If they are broken or cut, the medication will be dumped way too fast in the body, which may result in toxicity. Now on the screen, you can see that I've mentioned two name brands of oxycodone, oxycontin and extemza. 
Uh, keep in mind, these are not interchangeable. One tip to identify them is the Oxy content is available in a tablet form. Extenza is available in a capsule form. But again, these are not interchangeable. Then we have Oxymorphone. The name brand is Opena. Hydromorphone, the name brand is Dilaudid. Methadone, the name brand is Dolophene. Then we have Morphine. Again, the Morphine is available in an immediate release form and there is an extended release form as well. The extended release form is MS Contin. Then we have Fentanyl. Fentanyl is not available in a tablet or capsule form. It's available as an IV form used in the hospitals or in the pharmacy, you will see it in a patch form. And the name brand for this patch is Duragisic. Next, I wanna talk about the controlled medications which are used to treat ADHD. And if you don't know what controlled medication or scheduled drugs are, you should watch my video on controlled medications. That video basically includes everything you need to know about the controlled medications. And you must watch that video because it's important for you as a pharmacy technician to understand how to handle and treat the controlled medications and also what are the laws around the controlled medications. But the common C2 ADHD medications would be a combination of amphetamine with dextroamphetamine. The name brand is Adderall. Adderall is available in an immediate release and extended release uh, formulation. If you see just Adderall by itself, it refers to the immediate release, while if you see Adderall XR or ER, then that's the extended release formulation. Then we have methylphenidate. The name brand is Retilin. Methylphenidate ER. Um, again, the name brand is different, which is Concerta. Dexmethylphenidate. Name brand is Focalin. The next one is Lis Dexamphetamine. Name brand is Vivance. Vivance is not available as a generic. It's only available in the name brand form Vivance. Then I want to talk about the ADHD medications which are non-controlled. And some of the common ones I've put together for you are A, B, C. A for etamoxetine, the name brand is Stratera. B for bupropion, the name brand is Wellbutrin. C for clonidine, the name brand is Kepvoy. Next, let's talk about some of the medications used to treat migraine. All of the common migraine medications end with a stem name called triptan. So you can see on the screen, sumatriptan, elitriptan, rizatriptan. The name brand for sumatriptan is imitrex. Elitriptan is relpax. Rizatriptan is mexalt. So anytime you see a medication which is ending in triptan, that means the medication is used to treat migraine. Now you'll see that a lot of times patients who are getting pain medications are also prescribed muscle relaxants because combination of both of these help better alleviate the pain and you know improve the health condition. And some of the common muscle relaxants uh, you will see would be Beclofen, the name brand is Leoricil, Cyclobenzaprine, name brand is Flexeril. Carisipradol, name brand is Soma. Soma is a class four scheduled drug. Again, if you wanna know more about the scheduled drugs, watch my video on the control medications. Then we have methocarbamol, the name brand is Robexin. Tizenidine, the name brand is Xenoflex. Now here, I wanna uh, point out one thing. You see Tizenidine and Emlodipine. The ending of both of these medications is similar. You don't want to confuse tizenidine with emlodipine because tizenidine is a muscle relaxant. Emlodipine is used to treat blood pressure. Now, it's very important that you put together such similar sounding uh, medications or the medications that are spelled similar together and make sure you identify the difference in their uses. Here is a big difference. In the exam, if you're asked what emlodipine is used for, and in the options, one of the options is a muscle relaxant, then it's very easy to confuse between the two. So make sure you're able to clearly identify between the two. Another common condition in pain would be nerve pain. Now, nerve pain is different than the regular pain because in nerve pain, you will get pain not in your muscles. But nerve pain is basically a sharp shooting pain, and if somebody has a nerve pain and you just give them like an uh, opioid medication or a muscle relaxant or just a regular uh, over-the-counter NSAIDs that's not going to help relieve their pain 
For nerve pain, there are special uh, medications that treat this condition. And some of the common ones are gabapentin, the name brand is Neurontin, and then we have pregabalin, the name brand is Lyrica. Both of these are similar in chemical nature. The pregabalin basically in the body changes into the gabapentin. Another very common medication you want to know about is allopurinol, the name brand is Xyloprim. This medication is used to treat gout. Next, let's talk about over-the-counter decongestants. Decongestants are basically the medications which help open up the nasal uh, pathways and they're mostly available in a nasal spray form because with the spray, you can get that localized effect with the exception of Sudafed, which is available in a tablet form. It is available over-the-counter like without prescription, but it has certain restrictions because of which it must be uh, placed behind the ph pharmacy counter. So some of the common nasal uh, decongestions would be uh, fluticasone, name brand Flonase, pseudoephedrine, name brand is Sudafed. A customer purchasing Sudafed must present their ID and there are certain restrictions on how much you can buy per month. Then we have phenylephrine, the name brand is Neosinephrine, Oxymetazoline, name brand is Ephrin. Now cough is a very common condition. We all experience cough at some point in our life. Cough is of two kinds, dry cough and cough with mucus. I'm talking about some of the over-the-counter cough medications. If somebody is experiencing dry cough, then dextromethorphan um, can be used, which is available over-the-counter. The name brand is Delsim. However, if there is cough with mucus, then the best over-the-counter option would be uh, Mucinex, which is guafenicin. And because often a lot of people get dry hacking cough in combination with mucus, therefore both of these ingredients are combined together and put in one drug, which is called Robitussin DM. So dextromethorphan in combination of guafenicin is called Robitussin DM. Now these were some of the options which are available over the counter, talking about some of the prescription cough medications, common ones, would be guafenicin with codeine, which is the name brand is Vertusin AC. Now codeine is an interesting drug. When codeine is prescribed just on its own, it would be a drug category two. When it's formulated in combination with, uh, let's say acetaminophen, then it's drug category three. But when the medication is prescribed in combination with a cough medication, then it's drug category five. Then we have benzonitate pearls. Uh, the name brand is Tessalon. Um, promethazine is another common uh, prescription medication. Promethazine cough syrup is available just on its own, but is also commonly prescribed in combination with dextromethorphan. The name brand is Phenergan DM. Keep in mind, DM is the short form for uh, dextromethorphan. Then promethazine in combination with phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is a uh, decongestant. It's a mild decongestant. So this combination, uh, the name brand is called Phenergan VC. And then we have promethazine with codeine. The name brand is Phenergan Codeine. And again, a reminder, all liquid forms of codeine, which are available in combination with other cough medications, are scheduled category 5. Common breathing treatments. A very common breathing treatment that you'll see in pharmacy will be albuterol. I'm really surprised that it's not over the counter yet because albuterol literally is used in the treatment of asthma, cough, shortness of breath, wheezing. If you have, um, you know, if you run out of breath when you're exercising or running, albuterol is prescribed. Very, very commonly used. It is available as an HFA form, liquid form, also um, in combination with ipratropium or just as a formulation which can be used in a nebulizer. But HFA in particular refers to aerosol form. So anytime you see albuterol HFA, then they are referring to the aerosol form of the uh, albuterol and the name brands for the HFA form would be Pro-Air, Proventil, Ventilin and Pro-Air Respiclic. Now you can see on the screen, I put Pro-Air 8.5 gram, Proventil 6.5 gram. Now those values are there just to kind of help you remember the difference between them. So the active ingredient of all of these medications is albuterol, you know, they are the name brand. Uh, the only difference is the use of propellant. 
Uh, I'm not going to go in much detail about the propellant, but if you watch my video on the drug formulations, you will be able to understand what do I mean when I talk about propellants. So the amount of propellant in all of these inhalers is different. Uh, but in general, let's say if the doctor has uh, prescribed a prescription for just regular albuterol HFA, then, then you have the liberty to pick either Pro-Air, Proventil, or Ventolin. But when the doctor specifies albuterol HFA and in the quantity, um, let's say the doctor writes 6.5, then you must use Proventil because there is a difference in the weight of the propellant used in that particular uh, formulation. The Pro Air Recipe Click, however, has the powdered form of Pro Air. Uh, now, Pro Air Digi Click is also available, which is basically just a fancier version of Pro Air because, because you can connect your inhaling device with the mobile app. All right, next we have Ipertropium. Ipertropium name brand is Etrovent HFA. Now keep in mind that the HFA aerosol technique is just for the inhalation devices. Uh, Ipertropium is also available as a nasal spray. In that case, the name brand would be just Etrovent, not Etrovent HFA. Next up, we have the combination of Ipertropium and Albuterol. The name brand is Duoneb. Just, just a tip here that this combination is used in the nebulizer. So Duoneb, Neb should help you remember that the medication is used in a nebulizer, not as an aerosol. Next up is Theotropium. The name brand is Spiriva. A fun fact about Spiriva is that it's, it basically comes in a box which has like capsules in it. And so when you dispense it and patient goes home and opens the box and capsules come out, um, patient may think that, you know, capsules are taken orally and they may take the medication orally, but that's going to be of no value because Spiriva capsules are to be inhaled. So when you type directions for Spiriva, always say uh, that inhale the contents of the capsule via the handy held inhaler, which Spiriva does come with a handy held um, inhaler device. So you always say inhale the contents of the capsule via handy held inhaler. Just to give an idea to the patient that these capsules are not to be swallowed, the, rather the contents are to be inhaled. Next, let's talk about the oral steroids. Steroids are basically used um, as an anti-inflammatory. They kind of normalize the body hormones. Uh, some of the common ones would be prednisone, the name brand is Deltasone, methylprednisolone, um, the name brand is Medrol. Medrol is very commonly uh, you know, prescribed as a Medrol dose pack. Anytime you see a Medrol dose pack, the instructions would be six tablets day one and five on day two and you basically continue to decrease by one tablet every day uh, until you reach to like you know one tablet a day so that's just like one standard set of instruction for a med roll dose pack now the steroids can be inhaled as well uh, for the treatment of copd or maybe asthma some of the common ones would be budesonide name brand is palmicord Budesonide in combination with Formitrol, the name brand is Simbacord. Then we have Fluticazone, the name brand is Flovent. Again here, um, not to confuse the inhalation Fluticazone with the nasal Fluticazone. The name brand for the nasal Fluticazone was Flonase and the one which is used for inhalation, the name brand is Flovent. Then we have fluticasone in combination with Selmitrol. The name brand is Advir. Steroids are available in such vast formulations. They're not just available in a tablet or capsule form. Uh, they are also available in inhalation form, uh, nasal spray form, and they are also uh, present in topical form, injectable form. Not gonna talk about the injectable form here because that's not really a top 200, but the topical steroids are definitely top 200 drugs. Uh, some of the common ones are beta methazone, name brand is diproline, clobetazole, name brand is clobex, hydrocortisone, name brand is cortisone. Hydrocortisone is available as over the counter steroid as well. So over the counter hydrocortisone is 1% sold as cortisone 8C or just cortisone. The prescription strength is 2% and up. 
Now keep in mind, all of these topical steroids are available in the cream form and ointment form. There is a difference between creams and ointments. You don't want to confuse them or interchange them without checking with the pharmacist or the doctor. And if you want to know the difference between the creams and ointment, which you must know for your PTCB exam, check out my video on different dosage uh, forms of the medications. If you work in a pharmacy, you will definitely uh, come across insulins on your day-to-day -day basis, very commonly prescribed. Now, insulins have different categories. They're rapid acting, they are short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. Now, I do want to mention all these insulins in categories because you must know which ones are your mealtime insulins and which ones are just like once a day insulin because Let's say if you see a prescription for like a long acting insulin uh, prescribed as three times a day, that should be like a red flag and an alarming factor. In that case, if you see such prescription, immediately let your pharmacist know so the pharmacist can clarify that uh, direction with the doctor. Again, if you see just like a short acting mealtime insulin to be used just once a day, again something to double check with the pharmacist and prescriber so it's important that you do kind of remember uh, these insulins in categories so first up i'm going to talk about the rapid acting insulins so rapid acting insulins basically take up to 15 minutes to you know start working so really that indicates that a patient should maybe eat the meal and then take the insulin right away you know if you're taking insulin like a rapid acting insulin of course the patient must not skip the meal or in other words you can say if you skip the meal you skip the dose so some of the common rapid acting insulins would be insulin lispro name brand is humalog insulin Spart, name brand is novolog insulin glue lysine name brand is Epidra, all of these insulins are available in a vial form and also in an injectable pen form. Commonly, a lot of these insulins have 100 units per ml, but some of these also have 300 units per ml. So it's very important that when you are calculating the supply of uh, insulins, you refer to the insulin packaging um, to find out how many units of insulin are um, dispensed per ml of that insulin. Then we have regular acting insulin. These insulins take up to 30 minutes to start working. The common ones are insulin regular. The name brand is Novolin R. Again, you don't want to confuse the insulin regular or Novolin R with the Novolog because they're not interchangeable. There is another insulin called Novolin NPH or Novolin N. And again, these are not interchangeable. Novolin N or NPH is basically an intermediate acting insulin which takes up to one to two hours to start showing its effect. Then we have the long acting insulins which take up to two to four hours to start working. Uh, the common ones are insulin glargine, name brand is Lentis and Basiglar. Keep in mind, uh, these are not interchangeable. Then we have insulin detimer, the name brand is Levamir. Then we also have the ultra long acting insulins which take up to six hours to start working. A common one would be insulin deglutec, the name brand is Traceba, insulin glargine, the name brand is Tegeo. Again, insulin glargine, Tegeo must not be confused with the insulin glargine, Lentis or Basiglar. All of these are not interchangeable. But let's say if you get a prescription that just says dispense insulin glargine, then if it's the first time, then I would just have the pharmacist double check with the doctor and make sure which insulin the doctor wants to prescribe. But let's say if it's not the first time patient is getting it, always check the patient's history and see which insulin patient's been getting, whether they're getting Lentis, Basiglar, or they're getting um, Tegeo, then pick that insulin. Now, insulin is also available in an inhaled form. The name brand for that would be a Frieza. If insulin is not available in a liquid or a tablet form or any other routes of administration other than an injectable subcutaneous form or as an inhaled form. And speaking of that, if you see a patient is picking up an insulin prescription and you see in patient's profile that they don't have a prescription of syringes, then always offer patient the syringes. Also, the insulin vial would need insulin syringes 
but the insulins which are available in a flex pen form they are no good with the insulin syringe in that case you must dispense like a bd pen needle to make sure that the patient is able to appropriately inject that insulin nausea is a very common condition um, commonly referred to as morning sickness which a lot of pregnant women experience now some of the medications which are used to treat nausea would be on Densteron, name brand is Zofran. On Densteron is available just as a regular swallowable tablet, also as an orally dissolving tablet. And some insurances are particular about, uh, you know, covering a regular tablet or orally dissolving tablets. So if one or the other is not covered, then always uh, uh, try to process the prescription for the covered category and, uh, you know, reach out to the doctor and get permission for, um, dispensing the one which is covered and if you don't know the difference between the regular tablets and orally dissolving tablets then you want to refer to my video on dosage forms next is meclizine name brand is anti-word or dramamine dramamine is available as like a band form as well which you just like wrap on your hand that then helps with the motion sickness or nausea Scopolamine. Scopolamine is available in a patch form. Uh, this patch is applied behind the ear and it's changed every 72 hours. So this is not a tablet or a capsule, it's a patch form. Then we have dicyclamine. The name brand is Unisom. This is also available over the counter. Vitamin B6 is used to um, help prevent nausea or you know get relief from nausea as well. The name brand is Paradoxin. And when you combine dicyclamine with vitamin B6, this fancy combination of medication is available just as a prescription. The name brand is Diclegis. You know, like I said, this is like a fancy version of this combination. And a lot of the insurances don't pay for it. And a lot of pregnant women come in with that combination. And if so, if the insurance isn't paying for it, and then just don't turn the patient away or don't make the patient wait um, while the prior authorization is in process, refer the patient to the pharmacist. So the pharmacist can show the patient what to get over the counter, like what kind of vitamin B6 or what kind of uh, dicyclamine to get over the counter to get relief from nausea while they're waiting on a prior authorization to get approved. Now, last but not the least, I wanna talk about some of the miscellaneous commonly used uh, medications which i couldn't really fit into any drug category but i think they are really worth remembering uh, the first one is lidocaine lidocaine is basically a numbing agent it is available in a cream or a patch form um, lidocaine four percent is available over the counter and lidocaine five percent is available as a prescription and I think it's worth mentioning here because a lot of times some insurances won't pay for the lidocaine 5% patch and it's pretty expensive. So in that case, just, you know, have the patient talk to the pharmacist so the pharmacist can educate the patient about the over-the-counter option because the over-the-counter one is just a difference of 1%. And I think that's definitely better than nothing while the patient is waiting on a prior authorization or just doesn't have means to pay for an expensive lidocaine 5% patch as a prescription. The next one is vitamin D3. Now of all the vitamins, I think this is worth mentioning here because vitamin D3 uh, is available as a cholecalciferol and ergocalciferol form and a lot of uh, you know people get confused about these two formulations the cholecalciferol is produced by the human body in response to the sunlight so when we go out and sit in sun uh, that sunlight actually helps uh, transform the uh, vitamin D in our body uh, to the cholecalciferol form while the ergo calciferol is basically the kind of vitamin D3 which is not produced by the human body, it's produced by the plants when they come in contact with the sunlight. These two vitamins are not interchangeable, so always, always pay attention to what form or kind of vitamin D is prescribed so you can make the right selection. All right, so this is it for today's video. The list of top 200 medications is so extensive and so many different drugs are included in the list. If you go online, everybody has their own list, but I highly recommend that you go onto the PTCB website and scroll through the list of top 200s that they have given 
but the ones that I have mentioned in part one and part two of the video are the ones which in my personal experience are the ones which you should not skip at all of course it's very um, you know intimidating and hard to remember all top 200 but the least you can do is to remember these drugs because these for sure you need to know as a pharmacy technician and if you're able to do more then for sure but make sure before you start spending time on learning the other vast list you have a good grip of these basic top 200 drugs because these will definitely help you out not just in your ptcb exam but also in your day-to-day -day pharmacy life lastly if you have any questions or queries leave them in the comments and i'll be happy to help and make sure you subscribe so you stay up to date with me on all the pharmacy tech study guide videos i'll see you guys next time until then take care bye